Stephanie Harris. And I'm Elisa Bokeen. And if you didn't know, we are two brown chicks <laughs> changing the face of therapy on both sides. Both sides of the couch. Of the couch. Ebony's Welcome. Been together one day, y'all. Like we've been doing this for about five years, and so she's gonna. And I'm supposed it. to be a, a psychic at this point. You I should know exactly. You should know what my my intentions are. <laughs> Elisa sound like the partners that want you to read their mind. <laughs> Why don't you already know what I'm going to do? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome back again. Man. Yes. Welcome. So what are we doing today? We are here and we are still celebrating BIPOC Mental Health Month. And so we have been doing these on a weekly basis. We were doing, we had been meeting on Mondays, but this Monday I took a much well, well needed, well deserved <laughs> break. Um, I was in one of my favorite cities, New Orleans. And Ebony, you're taking a break next week, so we will do this again next <laughs> Friday. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll do it before next Friday, but I will be in New Orleans this weekend coming up. So we followed each other. <laughs> See, so, even there, we can't be in sync. So we're gonna have to get it together. Not on the same page. <laughs> Thank you, Brown Sugar Erica. Yeah, so let's get into it. Let's get into it, right? So today what we are talking about are signs that your mental health is suffering. And I have a feeling we probably are going to come up with some of the same ones. So I went ahead and did all five. And oh, just, okay. just to be ready. That's good. I like I like preparedness. I'll follow your lead. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, I'm I'm not gonna say all five because I want to see if we did match up with the same one. Okay. So we're gonna do that, but we're gonna be talking about this. So um, for those of you who have not been uh, to one of these <laughs> IG lives before, we encourage you to be part of the conversation. If you know somebody that should be um, part of the conversation right now, go ahead and invite them in. But what we also encourage you is to have you know ask your questions if you see the little icon there with the question mark that's probably the best way to submit your questions because then at the end we can go back and address them otherwise they might get lost here in the comments so all right drum roll please ebony you want to go first what are some signs <laughs> yeah i'll go <laughs> um so the first one that i wrote was a sign that you might be struggling with your mental health if if it feels like you keep having the same issues with everyone around you mm -hmm. um oftentimes it's like you know no one can be trusted everyone lies no one uh, respects my boundaries no one cares about my time all of those things where it seems like everyone in your life seems to be pushing the same buttons for you then that mm. probably is a sign you haven't been putting your mental health as a priority and that you may be struggling because it is very rare or unlikely that everyone is in cahoots with each other and has decided <laughs> that they are all going to disrespect your boundaries um, just because they felt like doing it. It means that you may have some work to do around boundaries. You may have some work to do around understanding what that means for you and how you might be setting yourself up to feel like you're getting taken advantage of and things like that. So that was the first one was just if you feel like everyone around you keeps pushing the same buttons you might need to work on that button. Mm -hmm. I feel like this was a really nice way of saying, you're the common denominator here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put it that way, but basically, you know, if it's everyone else around yeah. you, you're in the middle. <laughs> that might be yeah. a sign. No, I mm -hmm. think you make a really good point because I think, you know, we've talked about this before that, when we uh, many of us when we think about mental health we think about mental illness right yeah. like we think about mental illness and we think about these um situations where um you know we're thinking of maybe uh situations where we're maybe not as high functioning right yeah so i think 
when we are high functioning folks, we go to work, we pay our bills, all of the things. <laughs> um, we think, okay, well, I, I don't have mental health issues. Or again, we're associating mental health with mental illness. When the right. reality is it's mental health is health. We all have physical health, you know, the level mm -hmm. or the, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? The quality of your physical health depends on how you, you care for your physical self. And so mm -hmm. mental health is just an extension of that, right? So how are we caring for our mental, our, our mental wellness, right? And right. so boundaries, right? Your relationships, your interpersonal skills are an extension of your mental health and your mental wellness and your ability to communicate um, yep. and to relate to others. So I think that's a really good one. Yeah. And I think it's also, um, I saw, sorry, I saw uh, Erica say that, you, what if you're, well, once she said you're the problem, which is funny, <laughs> but what if you're under spiritual attack? And with that being said, around like if you are the center of the issues, right, if everyone is doing the same thing to you, I, I feel like people that are in our lives are mirrors of us, right? They are a reflection of things that maybe you need to that need to bring away that is bringing awareness to something you need to work on. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I funny, I just said that earlier today when that this shows up so much in relationships and I think especially in romantic relationships, right? where when we think of romantic relationships, we often think about all of the perks of being in a romantic relationship. And we think about of the love and the sweetness and the honey, mm -hmm. all the sugar, right? But what we don't always talk about, not just romantic relationships, but relationships really are an invitation for us to grow. I have mm -hmm. to grow. I have to evolve in particular with my romantic relationships because issues that I might be able to just kind of ignore or avoid in other relationships. Cause sometimes your family's like, that's just how they are, whatever, you know, right, you right. Like keep doing. Um, but in romantic relationships, especially we're really challenged. Like it'll reflect back to us. That person will reflect back to us, not just the things that we want validated about ourselves or celebrated, but those areas for growth. Right. right. So if right. I do struggle with boundaries or I do struggle with being honest about how I feel, you know, if I just right. don't look right. at then I'm being invited it by this relationship to really examine those parts of me. So I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So one of the other ones, so I didn't have that on the list. So good. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <We're gonna have laughs> so one that I had is if your bandwidth is really low and you're like snapping at everybody, Right, like you become more irritable. Mm -hmm. like just that, you know, people get on your nerves just on a regular basis. But lately, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times I'll hear clients say, I'm just over people. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> you know, pe yeah, you know, I mean. or um, all men are trash, or all women are this, or, um, you know, folks just are self, like, we start to generalize everything. We just have this low tolerance for people. Yeah. A lot of the times, it's kind of like what you were saying, this is sort of a, a symptom of a bigger problem that, um, one, it could be a boundaries issue. Two, it could be, I'm really overworked. I'm really overstressed. And so anytime that we're not caring for our mental health, that we are not, you know, centered and grounded and, and well overall, it's much more difficult for us to deal with stress. It's much more difficult for us to be flexible, um, or just to even tolerate, like, just, common everyday annoyances so if you mm -hmm. are finding that you're a lot more irritable people are getting under your skin a lot more it doesn't take a lot for you to go off this could be an indicator that you need to take a step back and re-examine what might be going in your on in your life that you're not addressing yeah i think that's that makes a lot of sense and it actually that does kind of go with one of the ones i came up with which was how are you are you handling situations differently or having a harder time dealing with situations than you have in the past right mm -hmm. so when you notice a difference in how you are interacting with people you notice a difference of 
oh, if someone, you know, if, if I'm in traffic, right, and I'm upset, but, you know, usually I'll be like, oh, I'm upset and I'm okay, but then now it's ruined my whole day and I just can't get past things as quickly as I used to. I think that's a good sign of like, well, is something else going on? Is there something that you're not addressing? Um, because it seems as though you're not able to like um, process or, you know, get back to your, your you know, norm uh, as quickly as you used to, which means there might be something going on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I know like for me, I'm a big crybaby. Like I'm a big crybaby just in general. And when I notice that I'm being even more of a crybaby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You see a difference yeah, in how okay. you're responding. <laughs> yeah, like, all right. I I'm like crying more. Like this is my third time crying today, or this right. this other right. thing like it's got me in tears. That is just like, okay, I gotta I gotta find out what am, what's going on. Um, maybe things that I'm okay with that I thought I was okay with, you know, um, one of the things that we yeah. talked about like is grief. Right. And so, um, if we're dealing like uh, my, my, fa my father passed away last year and there would be times where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing fine. I got this all under control. And then something just is like, you know, my, it might have even a bigger reaction than I anticipated. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not as okay as I thought I was. Do I need to schedule a session? Do I need to, what, what is it that I need mm -hmm. to do right now to care for myself? Um, so just kind of notice the level of your emotional reaction, I think is what we're both saying. Right, exactly. And, and the same with that, uh, and Erica, <laughs> Erica, you're reading my mind because I wrote down, if it's the exact opposite of that, because I feel like that is typically how I cope or not cope with things <laughs> is that I just, keep going right yeah um so not not processing it at all pretending like it didn't happen not like feeling like you're just going through the days and that's yeah. it and you're not necessarily experiencing life right yeah. where it feels like oh this week is already done like what did i do this like you're just kind of like mm. going through i think is another big one as well so it could be the over emotion that like you're feeling things a lot more and you're having a harder time dealing with stuff or it could be the fact that you are not at all and you just are going through the days and not actually experiencing life or, or being present in what's happening. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what was coming to mind when you were describing it is, is not being fully present. Because, of, you know, I think we talk about this a lot. You know, we talk about being present. We talk about being mindful and being in the present moment. And it really it is being in the present moment isn't easy, not just because our minds want to wander, but often what's in the present moment it's not always something that is pleasant right like in the present moment especially mm -hmm. if i'm going through something difficult um it's painful right and so yeah. when the present moment has something that is uh challenging that's overwhelming that is difficult it's natural for us to not want to deal with that the problem is that avoidance usually ends up causing more problems for us the problem yep. gets bigger or the ways that we detach, right? Whether it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, numbing ourselves or what have you, they end up causing us more issues. So right. Right. it's hard, which kind of like takes me into one of the other uh, signs that I came up or that came to my mind is if you are eating more than usual, drinking more than usual, smoking. I literally just wrote that down. <laughs> See, anyway. Go ahead. Overlap. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead and think. Go ahead and think. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, I think that's a good indicator where it's like, we're just kind of numbing out and it does provide some relief. You know, all, that's the thing about all of these things. It, Eating for comfort in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Having, you know, if you don't have issues around your sobriety, right? Like having a glass of wine every now and then is not necessarily a bad thing. It's when these things get out of balance and it's when mm -hmm. we're turning to them to numb ourselves or to right. have some relief, have some feel good. And that's that becomes our go-to, right? So I think yeah. when we find ourselves, okay, I had a glass of wine every day this week, right? Like, um, because I'm so wired or I'm eating a little bit more than I usually do. And then I don't even know how I ended up at the bottom of these, you know, at the bottom of this bag of chips. 
Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's important that, that we recognize that we all have coping skills, right? Mm -hmm. We all have things that kind of help us manage or help us um, deal with an emotion in that moment, right? If I am stressed, I go for a run. If I am stressed, I might play a game, binge on TV or have a glass of wine or that, you know, the, but those are coping skills, but that does not mean that you're actually doing the work to help you through whatever you're struggling with. Yeah. And so it's the overindulgence of the coping skills is when it becomes a problem, right? right? There's a difference between I'm stressed out, so I need to go for a walk outside and I'm walking 12 miles every single day because I'm trying to avoid something, right? Yeah. Then that's an overindulgence. And it's hard sometimes because especially when it's like the healthier, ex mm -hmm. the healthier activities, mm -hmm. then we say, well, I mean, working out isn't a bad thing. But if you know that you're doing it to avoid something, if you know that you're doing it because you are dealing with stress and you're not really processing what's happening, it still can be a bad thing. And I think we get confused sometimes. If it's not drinking, then it's not that bad, right? But no, yeah. it's still being used to avoid actually dealing with the issue. Which I think the flip side to that is also when we're trying, when we feel that our life is out of control in other areas and we go to maybe not overindulging, we go to restriction, right? Yes. I'm not yes. eating or um, I, I'm, I'm denying myself of um, nutrition and I'm pushing my body. I want to push my body to see my mm -hmm. limits or what have you. So I think when we're going on the up, on the other side of the spectrum where we feel like everything's out of control, but I can really control this. And so mm -hmm. there becomes an over-focus on restriction, right. on controlling. That is also an indicator that something's not being addressed. There's a stressor in your life that is not being addressed. And the reality is that some stressors, right? Like some, um, some of the challenges that life brings, there's not necessarily a solution, right? Again, I go back to grief, right? Like mm -hmm. my father passing away, there's not necessarily a solution to that. There is right. no solution to that. Right. Right. So what it, what it challenges us to do is how do we develop skills uh, to cope with it and to make new meaning of life. And, and I think it's when we don't have necessarily like a solution to what is a problem in our lives that can cause us to feel so much despair that we're like, okay, if I can't do anything about it, I just, you know, I'm just, it doesn't exist. Right, right. I'm going to pretend like it's not there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, you hit on mine, so go ahead with your... <laughs> well, how many was that? How many did we say? Okay, folks, how many was that? I think we got... I, I think we're at, like, five. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and again, for those of you who are just joining, I'm Elise Bokeen, and you are who? I am Ebony Harris. Yes, and we're Melanin and Mental Health. We're talking about signs that your mental health is suffering. We've been doing this for the month of July every week um, in honor of BIPOC Mental Health Month. And if you didn't know, Black and Brown folks, we are more likely to have um, issues with our mental health. And what I mean by that is there are so many stressors simply because of who we are in the bodies that we are in and in the uh, systems in which we operate yeah. that can cause us to have more stress in our life, have more challenges in our life that then impact our mental health. And so that is why we are talking today. Um, the other one that I came up with is if you notice that you're always fatigued, that mm -hmm. you're like, wait, mm -hmm. like you just don't have a lot of energy these days. You don't have a lot of motivation. Maybe you're somebody who's really creative on a regular basis, but you just don't even have, your creativity is just isn't even there. But I mm -hmm. think that, just lack of energy um, that often is associated also with depression, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you think of depression as, you know, you're, you're depressed, right? And your energy right. is low, but you're not mindful. And I think that's the other, what we both have been saying is when you're not aware and you're not present and, and you're not checking in with yourself um, or you're disassociated from your body, then it's really easy to overlook some of these signs. But if you yeah. start to notice some of these patterns, well, I'm noticing that I am, man, like I just don't have a lot of energy these days. Your body will do what it what it does. And that is yeah. to start giving you messages. Yep, yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is extremely important what you said around like you aren't as connected to your body. Like I thought about, 
if you are always trying to either you're busy, 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 busy. So you never have time to yourself. Or if you do have time to yourself, you're trying to find something to do to fill that time. Right. Yeah. Where you're not being able to kind of sit and pay attention to like what is happening or is there something you're trying to avoid? Like if I sit still, is there something that's going to come up that I'm not ready to deal with? Right. Um, so definitely, I think if you don't have an appetite or if you feel like you're eating too much and all of that, like all of those things where it feels like there's a, a difference in the way that you would normally feel day to day. If you feel like this isn't like typically I'm well rested, but today I just can't get my energy up even though I slept for a while. And even though I maybe took a nap and I just can't seem to get my energy up. And if that's an ongoing thing, definitely that's a way to kind of know there might be something going on you need to check out. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So I think we came, we, I think we listed five. Let's look at some of these questions. Before we go to the questions, um, I want you all to know that because, you know, Melanin and Mental Health, we are really about providing more resources to our communities, to the Black, Latinx, Brown, you know, communities, because we don't necessarily have a lot of representation of folks from our communities within the mental right. health field. We realize that there's a gap there. And so some of the work that we do, we have a directory, melaninmentalhealth.com, that is filled with clinicians from across the country that are from our um, communities and they have a better understanding of some of the nuances of our culture that sometimes we want to go to therapy and we want people just to get it. <laughs> you know, we don't right, want to explain right. it. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. one of the ways that we are here trying to change how our communities view therapy, how encouraged they are to go to therapy. But we also recognize that not everybody has access to therapy, not everybody has the resources. And so how mm -hmm. we, what we are doing in addition to our online resources and our social media account is this July 28th, we are going to have a free event heal mm -hmm. with mental health we're going to be sharing with you our framework on taking those steps to heal your mental health wherever you're at so we're hoping that you will join us um right. so wanted to mention that first but let's go ahead and look at these questions so um one of the questions we got here is how do you identify the fine line between a true boundary and avoidance oh that's a good one that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I I love talking about boundaries. And more recently, I've been like really processing and thinking about boundaries versus punishment versus avoidance, right? Because a lot of times when we are thinking about boundaries, one, there's this, ex we focus a lot of our energy on other people respecting our boundaries more than us respecting our boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so... I think it depends for me when I think about boundaries versus avoidance I think of how does whatever I'm trying to set a boundary around how does it make me feel to, to address it head on right so I'm thinking about if it's um I'm trying to think of an example of a thing like if someone wants to talk about um work right and and they want to tell you how you should be like doing your job or what you, you know, you should be applying for this job or whatever. It's trying to tell you what you, what you should be doing with your career and with your work, but you've already decided this is where I want to go in my career. So every time you talk about it, they want to tell you, this is what you should be doing. This is what you should be doing. This is what you should be doing. So at some point you might say, Hey, like, I don't feel comfortable talking to you about career stuff because you're not listening to me. You're not respecting my opinion. You just want to tell me what I should do. So I'm setting a boundary in, um, in the career area. Right. Avoidance would be, I feel is, I feel like avoidance is if I, you are bringing up things that I need to address and because I don't want to address it now, I'm like, I don't want to talk about that with you, mm -hmm, if that makes mm -hmm, sense. Yeah. So it's kind of hard because it still could be a boundary, but what is the reason behind the boundary? Is there, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to have any um, negative feelings. I don't want to have to confront anything that I really need to be addressing. And that's why I'm trying to avoid the conversation. Or is it because that feels like there is a lack of respect of like where I'm at and what I want to do. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like one yeah. is like, mm -hmm. I don't want to confront things that may need to be addressed. So I think, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And I, and I think when I, I think a boundary boundaries can happen on a spectrum, right? So you can have really, really rigid boundaries and you can have really, really permeable boundaries. Mm -hmm. So when I think of boundaries, I think boundaries are there to keep us safe, to keep us well, right? They're there uh -huh. to keep us safe and they're 
there to keep us well. There may be situations in your life where a very rigid boundary with somebody is necessary, right? Somebody that mm -hmm. is harmful, violent, what have you, like, no, you don't get any access to me whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to think of times where zero boundaries are necessary, right? Because I think even in really loving, safe relationships, yeah. there's still some level of boundaries. But I, I think when we, when I think of avoidance, right? Avoidance versus peace. I think boundaries, healthy boundaries bring us peace. And when I think of avoidance, right, is we're wanting peace, but you're skipping a part. You're skipping a step. Mm -hmm. That is the confronting mm -hmm. of the issue. Have you mm -hmm. at any point confronted the issue? If you have not confronted the issue, then you're avoiding, right? Mm. Then you're avoiding. Okay. Because in order right. to, and, and it may be that I confronted the issue and as a result of your response or what have you, I have to then set a really firm boundary with you because you are not, what the way you're interacting with me, what you're doing is not going to honor my well-being, and therefore I have to, to set this boundary. But if I say, oh, you know, I'm setting my boundary, I'm not dealing with this person, da 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 da, -da but it's because I don't like conflict or I tell myself, I'm just, you know, I don't want to deal with that. That's avoidance. Yeah. That's avoidance. I think of it when you said that, that triggered a thought, because I have a lot of, I've had this conversation so many times of wanting to set a, a boundary without the conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm just deciding, no, nope, I'm just not going to um, talk to them about this topic anymore. And then if they bring it up, it's like, yeah, they crossed my boundary. And it's like, but you never even told them that was a boundary. Right. And you so it seems like avoided, that. You didn't right? You didn't tell them that why it bothered you or anything. You just decided this is the line, and if they cross it, it's a problem. But you haven't done anything to inform them to right. allow them the space to understand why and like to choose not to do it anymore. So yeah, I think that's what it is. You're trying to set a boundary without the conversa conversation or without, without any communication. Yeah. And like you said, there are times when you might have to do that, right? If someone is harmful, if someone is violent with you. I don't need to communicate with you. I have to just stop, right? Yeah. But if it's someone, you know, that you do care about or they, that you do have a relationship with and they've done something that feels like, um, that, that doesn't feel good to you, right? That that does feel harmful, then you, if, if it's really a healthy relationship, then you have to have the communication. You have to be able to say it versus just deciding this is now my boundary and they should just understand it even though I've never said anything yeah. to them about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had this one, um, I had tweeted one time and it, it was pretty rough. My, my tweet went kind of viral. Uh, but <laughs> I, it was, um, it's not ghosting if I've already addressed the issue multiple times and you are not honoring. At that right. point, I'm just walking away, right? So, right. I, so again, it's the same sentiment. It's like, if I've addressed this issue with you time and time, you know, maybe I've addressed it time and time and time again, and you're still not respecting my position. At this point, I'm done. Right? right that's a boundary but that i think would be the key is did you address the issue did you let the other person know why this line in the sand is there now um was it worth it giving them the opportunity to repair because sometimes that we when we confront people and we tell them that they're hurting us it's a vulnerable thing because yeah. it opens us up to disappointment and rejection Right. Because at that point, they may be like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not even a big deal. What is and sometimes that's what we're avoiding. We're mm -hmm. avoiding that they are not going to honor. Um, yeah. Our feelings. Yeah. That's yeah. why people hate boundaries, because it, it's if I tell them and they still don't do it, then what do I have to like then enforce my boundary? And the answer is yes. And that's yeah, the sucky part. That's you know? the hard part. That's the hard yeah. part. OK, there's another question here. Um, I like this. So it says, what are the different types of therapists? I ask because I've struggled to find one that fits what I need. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering different types of therapists. Are, do we mean like the different so, licenses or right. what people specialize in? I mean, if you're still That's what I was going to say. We can go through the different licenses and what they do and then when it comes to a therapist, like a therapist, counselor, a social worker, then there are specialties underneath those that could also fit what you're looking for. Yeah, if you're still um, if you're still on, um, go ahead and let us know. Or you know, okay, let's see. They may have submitted it. Specialty. Okay, so they're referring to specialty. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, there's 
so many. I don't know, like I can't, even think, you know, because you have people who specialize in um, eating disorders, trauma. Ebony and I, we're both relationship therapists. You got sex therapists. Um, you know, both of us address both of those issues. You've got people who specialize with children. So there's so many different. We do not do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think like finding the right fit for a therapist. It, it goes beyond just specialty. So I think that's a really good place to start, right? So what is the issue that I'm struggling with? Okay, well, I'm struggling with um, relationships. That's always going to be our go-to because that's, that's what we do. So I'm going to look. I would say, Go ahead. sorry, I'm just thinking about one that's a little bit harder yeah. because relationships is pretty easy, yeah. hopefully. But if I am a Black woman who is high-functioning, who is concerned about like, I, might, I think I might have some anxiety, but I'm not sure, right? So because anxiety is one of those like words that every therapist works with, it, yeah. it feels like it can become difficult to find the right person that actually fits what, you, what you're looking for. Yeah. And so I think of it like, I only say because I feel like relationships is easy, right? Like if someone has like, especially because I, I know that we, our marketing is directed to specific stuff where some people have more generalized marketing where it's kind of like I work with everybody right and so I think if you are very clear like I need someone who can speak to me directly then I would look at their marketing is the first thing like even when you go to the directories if they have they work with everything from A to Z then it may not be the person that you need if you feel like I have a very specific thing that I need to like focus on sorry to interrupt but yeah no 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 you didn't interrupt. I'm just I saw that more questions were coming in. I was wondering if it was that person. Maybe if you tell us, if you're still on, if you want to submit <laughs> what is the specialty or what is it that you're wanting to work on, we might be able to narrow it down a bit. Um, but I do think one thing to keep in mind is a lot of therapists and a lot of therapists in private practice um, haven't necessarily gotten business training. Right, like, so we go to school, yeah. they train, and, and there are some programs that might give you some business training, um, but a lot of therapists don't, right? And so that's gonna reflect in the marketing. It's gonna reflect on how they speak to you, like like Ebony is saying. So that doesn't mean they're not a great therapist, okay? Mm -hmm. So I just wanna preface that. So you might have to kind of sift through a lot of people to finally get to it might be harder to find them is what I'm saying and that is just because um it may just have to be with how they the message that they are putting out there and and their ability to connect with somebody that like you that's looking specifically for them but I would start with specialty right the next thing is you know there are going to be a lot of a lot of the folks that come to our website they're going there because they specifically want someone that looks like them right so that would be the next tier well I want to work on this issue but I like everybody said I want to work with a black woman or I want to work with a you know Latino man what have you okay that's your next level then the part where the magic really happens and that's hard to tell from a profile is the connection that you have with your therapist right and it's just like dating it really is just like dating sometimes you might have to see several different therapists before you find that right connection because there's plenty of research that shows the training the specialties all of that stuff what it comes down to is your connection with a therapist that really facilitates the opportunity for change and for growth. So uh -huh. let me see, there's a, see if they, um, so, okay. So are there any therapists that focus on dealing with a spouse with gaslighting issues? Okay. Then yeah, that would be, yeah. Yeah, that would be a, a, I would special, I would go to somebody who um, specializes in relationships. I would go to someone maybe even that specializes working, not saying this spouse is right. a narcissist. That, right? I was about to say that, that trigger word. <laughs> not everyone is a narcissist. Okay. So there's Very few really people actually, are narcissists actually. That, yes. Yeah. There's actually a really small number of people who actually fit the um, diagnoses of narcissism, but you do have a lot of manipulative folks out there, but maybe somebody who yeah. specializes in nurse narcissism 
who is aware of these types of tendencies of people would be able to um, provide you more insight on someone who's manipulative, gaslighting, et cetera, et cetera. And I would also, I would, this is just based on what I do and, and experience I've had with couples, I would see if that therapist, what's their process in the beginning? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people who work with couples, they will see you as a couple and as individuals. Some people that work with couples say, no, I only see you together. And I think when we're talking about any type of gaslighting, abuse, anything like that, it's important that you have individual sessions as well, mm -hmm. because there may, it may not be safe in a couple session right. to really talk about what you are concerned about. So I would ask them, you know, try to see if they can do a consultation or at least give you some type of insight of like, what do the first few sessions look like? Because it is important that you have time and space for y'all to talk separately so that that can be addressed if there is, or if there are any other issues. That's why I always do individual session because yeah. I can't assess for like abuse if the person that's abusing you is sitting right there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, I like to have an individual session with each of my clients. When I'm seeing them, you know, a, in relationship therapy, I want to see them individually first. Because I also want to get to know them individually first, but also for mm -hmm. safety reasons. So, yeah, somebody that might be a little bit more open to doing some consulting with you. Not all therapists will do a consultation, especially mm -hmm. if they are really busy, if they, mm -hmm. a lot of times folks who take insurance, they they just don't have time, right? Um, right? I know I do consultations. Ebony does consultations because we want to make sure it's a good fit for both of us. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We might have to refer you out if it's not. That's right. Yeah. All right so let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you need boundaries when it comes to a grandparent? Yes. <laughs> Anyone in your life. It, it's it's funny because I feel like, like you said, it doesn't matter what type of relationship you have. There's typically a need from, for some type of boundaries. And I think we need boundaries with the elders in our families a lot. <laughs> Those yeah. are probably the main people you need boundaries with. Yeah, you know, because a lot of our elders are still from the generation of is disrespectful to not let me disrespect you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Type mm -hmm. of mentality. You know, boundaries mm -hmm. is not a thing. You know, I'm Latina in boundaries, what? Shut up. You know, like so <laughs> so um it's it's just and and, uh, and I will say also because we also come from very collective communities, right? Like where the collective is often the focus, right? We yeah. we are family yeah. or folks right so sometimes again that can get out of balance to where okay now everybody's in everybody's business or i'm grown right like mom i'm 46 <laughs> i think i can handle this <laughs> i'm 46 yeah. i got this i'm not 12 anymore i do think right. that boundaries with our elders is hard because nobody can trigger us like our parents, our grandparents, <laughs> our caretakers. Yes. And so you can do all, I think it was Dr. Maya Angelou who said, um, like to, like, it, I'm paraphrasing, I'm butchering it, but it's like, you'll find out just like how evolved or how healed you are at, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see if there's any more questions. Um, so there was another question. How do you deal with a close family member who is a narcissist? So again, they might, they're very, there's a very small population of folks who are actually meet the criteria of narcissism. So you, you know, so I would just be careful with that. But um, if you're dealing with folks who are, again, it goes back to boundaries issue. I really feel like very much of this it goes back to boundaries. Yeah, when it comes to like personality disorders um, or manipulation or anything like that, that's the that's going to be your number one tool is to yeah. set boundaries. Yeah, and for you and and not for you to expect them to respect your boundaries, right. but for you to have very hard boundaries that you respect. 
um, and not because again, it's not about changing their behavior. Their behavior is their behavior, which is why you have mm -hmm. to set your own boundaries to work around that behavior, right? So, it, and it might start with small stuff like this isn't a conversation I'll have, or if we talk, it has to be very quick and like you know casual. But as you start to see how they might try to go around that, you might have to get stronger and stronger boundaries. And so, the biggest thing is for you to do your work on recognizing that it's not for you to change their behavior it's for you to change how you interact with them and you decide what that looks like yeah um there's a couple of books there's that i really enjoy so i think the other part to this is boundaries are for us boundaries are to protect our well-being and boundaries mm -hmm. also require us to take action so it doesn't matter if you're going to respect my boundary or not in terms of okay, if you don't, then I have to take action on, on that. So yeah. I will not engage with you in this way. I think often what happens and why it's difficult to set those boundaries is because we're confused about what's okay for me to do, what's not okay. Like what is actually, a, a, what? How, how do I know my boundaries are being crossed? And so when you're mm -hmm. dealing with folks who are manipulative or what have you, getting really educated on when you're being manipulated. So there's a book yeah. that I really like called um, The Gaslight Effect. And I I like that because it goes through all these different scenarios of you might be being gaslit if blah, 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 blah. Um, the other book that I really like, because I know somebody mentioned something about their grandmother. Um, it's called um coping with emotionally immature parents something like that like mm -hmm. or children of I think that's the name of it what yeah it? yeah I, said, I think that's it children of emotionally immature parents or something like that yeah yeah i really like that one because again when when we grow up with folks who and i'm trying to look it up over here when we grow up with folks who have really strong personalities and they are used to running the show a lot of times what can happen is we have a lot of doubt in ourselves. We we have mm -hmm. a hard time, you know, really distinguishing between what's my stuff, what's your stuff. So what I like about these books is they, they give you examples. They give you examples. Um, I think it's called coping. Uh, take it away, Ebony, while I look for this. <laughs> Uh, the, what I was going to say as far as like dealing with, with the idea of boundaries is I think the biggest thing is for you to be clear on like the, the steps. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but instead of feeling like I have to, um, I think sometimes the fear is like, will I have to cut this person off for good, right? Will I never have to talk to this person again? But I think when you can set a boundary and when you're able to do it from not an emotional place, right? Once you've decided like, hey, this is what causes me harm. This is what I'm going to do. Then when you set the boundary, you can still continue to have a relationship with that person. Absolutely. Right? Like you can, I can say like, if, if my grandmother says something inappropriate to me, I can just ignore that because I don't talk about that with you. So I'm not even, you said it, it didn't even process to me because I don't have that conversation with you and I'll just change the subject, right? Yep. This isn't to say that they're not going to get upset. This isn't, but, but I can still love on you. I can still want to spend time with you. I can still do all those things with, with boundaries in place and with you start, you will start to understand like, oh, she just isn't going to respond, right? And especially once I've communicated like that's something I don't talk about, I'm, it doesn't have to be, oh, okay, you've said something, now I'm mad and I'm not going to discuss it with you at all and now I'm not going to talk to you about anything. Like, no, a boundary can be in place and you can still have a relationship with that person. Yeah. Now it's also up to that person if they still want to have a relationship with you, right? Because some people don't like having relationships with people where they don't get to like step all over their boundaries, <laughs> where they don't get to say what they want to say and treat you how they want to treat you. They're not fans of that so that's that's a thing too but i don't want it to feel like just because you're setting a boundary you're just cutting people off left and right, right. that's not the goal of the boundary no. it's just a matter of like this is what's okay with me and this is what's not okay with me think of it as limits yeah so the the book is called recovering from emotionally immature parents practical tools to establish boundaries and reclaim your emotional autonomy again i really like that book because it also highlights if you are at your mother's house and she starts to say these things 
here's what you can do. You can say, mm -hmm. I got to go to the bathroom. Let me take a break. <laughs> or, well, mm -hmm. mom, I really just came to see how you were doing. I'm glad you're well. Right. <laughs> got to go. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Set limits before you get there. I have only 15 minutes because yeah. I know we have a 20 minute mark is when we have issues. Right. Yes. Uh, the other the other book that's great on boundaries is Set Boundaries, Find Peace, A Guide to Reclaiming Yourself by Nidra Tawab. Mm -hmm. Great book out there. Also. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. One more question. Any resources or tips for healthcare providers working in psychiatric mental health? Tips on on, on your own? Like, like caring for your mental health? Yeah. yeah. I'm guessing that's probably what they mean. Self care tips. Ooh, I start to. I feel like we're like a broken record in terms of um, boundaries because, as I'm thinking about all of this, it all goes back to that. And and so when I'm thinking about working in um, healthcare providers, psychiatric care, if we are not caring for ourselves and we are working in environments that where there's all kinds of trauma there's all kinds of people in despair right mm -hmm. if we don't have really good emotional boundaries if we don't have really good um, limits on how much time I'm going to stay there if we don't have a practice or a ritual like when we leave that job of like I'm leaving this stuff here I gotta go mm -hmm. and then how do I recharge it's so easy to burn out and I think become skeptical um, and just fatigued you know fatigued so I think all of the things that you might do in terms of self-care, and, and I say all the time, for me, self-care is the ongoing monitoring of your needs, your wants, whether that's physical, emotional, spiritual, you're regularly checking on them, and then you, you recognize what you need and you take the steps to get that need met, right? Just like you would for a child, mm -hmm. a pet, a plant, whatever. Um, yeah. So I think your self-care and not just bubble baths and all that good stuff it has to be like on 10 like you have yeah. to like that has to be a priority right and i would say that means making sure that you have your own therapist right so you can have a place to process it finding um, communities where you feel safe if you do need con to consult but also finding communities where you just have joy and peace and you can just kind of you know you can kind of leave that at work and like Elisa said that emotional boundaries is extremely important because you shouldn't be taking on everyone else's pain as your own and yeah. it's at home with you right if you yeah. can leave it at work then you, and if that means you need to figure out how to do that that means you probably need a therapist if you're if every client you interact with if every patient you have it comes home with you that may yeah. be a sign that you need to have your own therapist so that you can process and figure out how do you separate your life versus your work life i think i think mindfulness really helps with that also because it does go back to being present so how how can i be present with my yeah. patient um my clients be there how can I observe not absorb and mm -hmm. then not there how can I be present in this moment and I think what you said Ebony also is being very strategic and intentional about creating joy to buffer um yep. other stuff there's also a really great book uh burnout by Emily Nagowski um that book is excellent. I love it. She really goes into the research also specifically around stress for women. Um, so mm. that's a great resource for you to check out as well. All right. Well, this was so good. Uh, thank you all for participating. Let me look if, if there's yeah. anything that I'm missing in terms of comments. Um, yes. Thank God for our therapists. I don't know where I would be <laughs> without mine. So, um, yeah, I think I think we're getting. Oh, so somebody here as a neurodivergent, a lot of people's issues with me is how I communicate. I've struggled with being verbal when it comes to emotional transparency. I text long messages in fear of being dismissed. Thank you for pointing that out, right? I thank you for pointing that out because um, I think especially in relationships, we're not always taking into consideration 
um the way that other people process information right right we right. all process information the same and being aware of how the people in your life may process information and not personalizing um social yeah. behavior is so important so thank you for pointing yeah. that all right y'all again please join us on july 28th 7 p.m central standard time you gotta sign up though go ahead and sign up if you go to the link in our bio you will find the um the site where you can sign up for our heal mm -hmm. event taking place on july 28th is free it is free we're gonna give you resources <laughs> we're gonna give you tips we're gonna help yes. help you get your mental health in order as we close out BIPOC Mental Health Month. And Ebony, let them know all the other ways that they can stay in touch with us. You can follow us across social media at Melanin and Mental Health, Melanin Health on Twitter. You can also go to melaninandmentalhealth.com to find a dope therapist within your community, as well as any previous podcasts that we've done are found there and our resource page, which has podcasts and books and all kinds of resources, which I, as we were talking about these lists, I'm writing down the list like, oh, goodness, I need to update our resource page. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But all of that can be found at Melanin and Mental Health as well as, well as our dope merchandise. So yeah, there definitely. is no definitely check out that resource page shout out to ebony harris who took who put in a lot of time for oh that yeah <laughs> that, put that that was a labor of love she put so much effort into that resource page it's an amazing resource to have some of our favorite people out there who are advocating for our mental health who have resources free resources paid resources go check it out um sign up check our merchandise out like ebony said we've got all kinds of teas and, and mugs and all this other stuff to keep yeah. the health conversation going so all right y'all thanks for joining us we'll see y'all next time bye, bye.